Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Ashura. Today we're going to tie a Biot Wing Nymph. This is a simple nymph. It's got some steps to it, but it's still pretty simple. And uh, the materials we're going to use, we're going to start out with the hook. I'm going to use a Lively Legs Lip Splitter 470, number 14. This is a Scud Shrimp Nymph Hook. One extra strong, one extra short. And you can see that this hook is offset. The point is offset from the eye. And this allows for greater hooking. We're not going to put a bead on this. But if you had a bead on there, the bead would take up more of the gap. So, therefore, having that offset on that scud hook is good because you're not going to take up too much gap with the bead if you put a bead on there which you perfectly fine to do with this uh, with this fly the weight I am going to use I'm going to use lead wire Pennsylvania it's perfectly fine to use lead wire on your flies and I'm going to use ten thousandths and then we're going to use Mallard flank dyed uh, wood duck. And we're also going to use peacock pearl. And the body is going to be, the abdomen is going to be thread. And I'm going to use this white thread, and then I'm just going to use marker on it to color it. The reason I'm using this thread is because of the thickness. I don't have a thick brown thread. So I'm going to use this, and being that the the thread is thicker it's going to form my abdomen a lot quicker and then after the I get the abdomen done I'm going to tie it off and I'm going to switch to a lighter thread which is going to be a rusty brown 8 aught and of course we want a rib and our rib is going to be a fine gold wire it's not going to be extra fine depending on the size of your hook that you're tying uh, determines the size of the wire so if you're going a 16 18 20 you want an extra fine wire so we're going to and the last thing is I'm going to use I have this uh, these markers here chart pack it is and this is a tan and I've had this for years, so whatever the price was, it's certainly worth it. But uh, we're going to start out by putting lead on the hook. And I'm going to use that 10 thousandths, like I said. And I'm going to start it just inside the point. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to give it about 12 wraps. And then I'm going to pull off that back section and we want that lead to be on the thorax but you want it to you want to stop that lead about one eye length from the eye of the hook you don't want to have too much bulk at that at the eye of the hook which this is going to be the the head of this fly is going to be large enough as it is so I'm going to start out with the white thread I'm going to start behind the eye and just come up to the lead and then hold the lead in place because you will push it and then you can bring it to behind the, the lead wraps and break off or cut off your excess now I'm going to take my gold wire my rib I'm going to butt it to the lead wraps and I'm going to bring that back and once you get that secured you can hold that wire at the 45 in order for you to get that nice tight wraps I'm going to come down around the bend about halfway around the bend now I'm going to loosen my hook and I'm going to turn it just make sure there we go I'm going to turn it so I'm the part that I'm tying on is going to be more horizontal. Keep that gold wire out, out to the back there. Now the tail is going to be the 
wood duck flank and when you take the wood duck flank this is uh, just the very tip when you go for your wood duck flank uh, for the tail you have to consider that it is much much thinner at the tips than at the butt so it, it does have to be a little thicker because when you tie in the tips they're going to be thinner so I'm going to go for a tail to be about the length of the body I'm going to hold this towards my side slightly make a loose loop bring it around and pull it straight down and that tail will end up right on top now after my first turn now I can pull it to size better I kind of made that one a little long then I'm going to give it tight wraps up and this is helping to create a the thicker body also and you can even go over the lead wraps a little bit with it and that will help to fill those gaps that are in the lead wraps trim that off now and I'm going to go ahead and bring that thread back and I'm going to form that uh, body I'm actually going to turn this sideways but I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise and that will flatten it out and that will actually help with the uh, forming of the body it'll keep it nice and smooth and we're going to come up to about halfway in the little lead and I'm going to go back and I'm not going to go all the way back and I'm going to go forward and this is going to create that taper spin that counterclockwise once again and that helps to create that taper and I get it about halfway I'm gonna go ahead and turn my hook once again to a more upright horizontal on the thorax Here's a good tip for you. If you have the capability to uh, record yourself tying, that's a good idea because you can watch the video and say, oh, I should have did this first or I should have did that first. And it really helps you to advance your tying. But now I'm going to take my whip finish and tie this off. Just put the hook over, go around the camel hump, flip the whip finish over, and you have your X there. And then just give it three or four. Take the hump out. Slide it up. Now you can take your scissors or your cuticle trimmer poke and snip and get rid of that. Now I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to color this the color I want, which is tan. And you can actually just get the top and the sides if it doesn't bleed too badly see it, it bled a little bit but the bottoms of, of nymphs are always a lighter color than the tops but I'm going to go ahead and do that completely so you can just color the top and leave the bottom that white or tan or color and of course the more marker you put on the darker it would get now I'm going to change to my lighter thread and this is pretty close in color to what that is this is a rusty brown thread now once I got it secured I'm going to take my uh, rib and sometimes when you're tying the rib depending on where you tied it in if I go here see I'm messing with the tail right there right off the bat so I'm going to take it 
I actually have to turn that a little bit. I'm going to put a wrap underneath the tail. I'm going to counter wrap this. I'm going to go under the tail. And then I'm going to start my counter wraps. And that does two things. It holds your tail straight. And it also gets you so you didn't move the tail. So I'm going to just wrap this. I'm going to give it like three to four wraps. There's two three and four. I'm going to give it a couple of wraps of thread. They don't unravel. The, the let or the wire doesn't unravel very easily, but give it a couple of securing wraps there. And I'm going to helicopter this off. Come on. And it moved on me. So we got that helicoptered off. I'm gonna straighten that hook back up. Bring my thread up to the eye. Now I'm going to put the legs on, and that is going to be the mallard flank. And when you choose the mallard flank or you're gonna see that when you pull these together there's a lot of uh, barbels that aren't going to be even when you pull them up to the top so you want to remove the barbels that aren't going to be even which that turns out to be almost half of what I had there but that's okay because now they're going to be even There we go. Now I'm going to tie this in. Going to pinch it all together. And I think I got it. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to leave some of it sticking out the front. Let me back that up just a little bit. We're going to leave about half the length or three quarters of the length of the body sticking out front. And we can secure that. We can go ahead and bring that actually down to the top of the abdomen. And we can trim that off now. Bring that to where I want my abdomen or my thorax to start. Now we're going to take a pair of peacock hurl and we're going to tie these in by the tip and when you when you get peacock hurl make sure there's a lot of hurl on there or the barbels you can see those barbels make sure there's a lot I have a package that they're they're practically stripped peacock hurl but we're going to trim off the very brittle tips and we're going to tie that in Make sure there's a smooth transaction transition from where that uh, mallard flank ended. We're going to go ahead and tie, wrap these. Try to keep them together if you can. And we got our thorax. We want to leave that space there. We le I left the space in front for the head. If you wrap it too far, you're going to have a much bulkier head. So we'll go ahead and give this about three wraps to secure it. Put a couple of wraps in front of it. And again, I take my poke and snip cuticle trimmer and remove them. Now we're going to take our uh, mallard flank and we're going to bring them back over. You can kind of get them help help them divide there by by using your finger. But we're going to take our half hitch tool. 
just going to give it one double half itch. I'm going to put that over the eye and I'm going to push them back. And then I can get them into position also. And push them right back to the peacock. There you go, kind of straighten them out there. And there's our legs. Now we're going to take our goose biot. So we're going to take our goose biot and we're going to choose what size we want. And usually there's the butt end. You can see there's a little bit of fuzz on there. And usually for a smaller one, you want to go and take a couple off the butt end because they're because they are smaller biots. But we're just going to go ahead and grab two. Thumb, forefinger, middle finger. Grip them and pull them off. Now I have my biots. I'm going to take them one at a time. And I'm going to use that natural curve in the biot. Going to lay this. We're going to tie these in just like you would with the prints. I'm going to go from my side forward to the far side back. And we're going to tie this in. Give it a loose loop. Pull it straight down. And then you can add a couple more. Then you take your second one and do the opposite from the far side to my side back and you can actually look at the fronts since you pulled them off together they're going to be the same length so you can eyeball the fronts to the same length and the backs will be the same length Now I'm going to, I got three or four wraps, I'm going to pick up the fronts and wrap right in front. Now I can remove the excess, you should be looking at an X. And now we can form our head. I'm going to cover over all the white. I said that head would be a little bulky, which it is there, but we still have the eye wide open. Take our whip finish one more time, hook it around the camel hump, flip the whip finish up, and there is our X. Pull that X to the shank, and then you can just go around the shank three, four times. Take it out of the camel hump, pull it, pull the hook to it, tighten it up. Go ahead and remove the thread. Take a little bit of head cement. Clean your brush off well here. And we go right around. And here we have a Biot Wing Nymph. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Let them know I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase this or any flies that I make, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the Flyman Gym. And if you don't see it, just give me a message and we'll figure out what you want. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.